Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Well, it's the end of the week, which means it's time to hold our breath again and see what the heck is going on with the freight market. So as always, we're going to be looking at the general market first, looking at capacity, volumes, rejections, and diesel prices. And then we'll go into specifics for dry vans, reefers, and flatbeds to see what the spot market is doing and where the relatively better areas are. So without further ado, ready? Let's go. All right, as always, we are going to start with capacity changes. And as of last Friday, we lost an additional 277 carriers net. Now, if we're looking at the general freight volume, we can see that volumes did make a recovery over the past week for a while there it looked like something is happening with volumes but no they made a recovery and are still on their way up and way higher than 2023 levels but what about those tender rejections that were a source of good news last week well sadly this week it's not as much of a good piece of news when it comes to tender rejections because even though they went up last week they're back on their way down and currently rejections are at an average of 3.56 on a national level. Finally, when looking at the general freight market, of course, we have to touch on diesel and you can see right away that diesel went up again and now is at $4.08 per gallon on a national average, which is a bummer especially after we see the spot market conditions. But yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at what's in store for dry vans, reefers, and flatbeds, what the spot market looks like, and what are the relatively better areas to stick to. So first and foremost, we have our dry van spot loads, and we can see that they are a little bit higher than that orange line, which is 2023 levels, but they again decreased week over week. Now, did it have an effect on rates? Unfortunately, it did. And rates for dry vans did decrease to $1.84 on average. The only thing that is calming me down here, sort of, is the fact that the five-year pattern shows that during this time, usually van rates do decrease. So here's hoping that they don't go much lower than they are right now. But now the question is, where do you need to go if you have a dry van to grab those relatively better opportunities? Now, what we usually do every week is we look at these two maps by Sonar, which shows us the outbound tender volume and outbound tender rejection. But what I started doing is I started trying to make it a little bit easier to decipher these two maps. What we really want is we want to stick to places where the outbound volume in the general freight market for dry vans is high, so as dark blue as possible, and is paired with higher rejection rates as well. Now, just so that you guys know, the top five states for dry vans with the highest general freight volume, so not just spot market, it's contract market, are Dallas, Texas, Atlanta, Georgia, Detroit, Michigan, Ontario, California, and Memphis, Tennessee. And you can see those reflected right here. So we have Ontario, California, which is dark blue. We have Memphis, Tennessee. We have Dallas, Texas right here. We have Atlanta, Georgia, of course. And then the last one was Detroit, Michigan right here. So that makes sense. Now on the rejection side, the top five states for dry vans that have the highest outbound rejection, which means contract carriers are rejecting to haul these loads, thereby sending them to the spot market. For dry vans, these five places are Cedar Rapids, Iowa at 18.81% rejection. We have Des Moines, Iowa at 15.23% rejection. We have Dubuque, Iowa, which is 14.32% percent rejection, Jacksonville, Florida, 12.28% rejection, and Tallahassee, Florida at 11.98% rejection. But what we really want to know in order to figure out where dry vans should be, we need to pair the high volume and the rejection rates because this is the formula. The volume index times the percent rejected 
gives us an idea of which places actually see more contract to spot volume, more loads from the contract pushed to the spot market. So based on all of this data, I made this map. I do apologize. It's extremely blurry. The darker green in area is the more loads are hitting the spot market from the contract market. So Ontario, California, we have Iowa, uh, Texas, but the top five places where there is a ton of volume hitting the spot market is Atlanta, Georgia, Ontario, California, Memphis, Tennessee, Houston, Texas, and Los Angeles, California. Now, something to be aware of when volume hits the spot market, of course, it kind of skews the load to truck ratios, right? So the more volume, the better. Usually it signals higher rates. However, you also have to be very mindful of what is happening on the spot market. Where is there overcapacity? Where are there more trucks than there are loads and so on and so forth. All right, then we have our reefers. So on the spot market, it's really, I don't know what is happening with reefers at this point. It looks like everything is going to the contract market because volumes are continuing to slide down below 2023 levels. And if we take a look at the spot market rate averages, again, we saw a decrease to $2.00. 19 cents on average, including all lengths of haul. Again, the only thing that's making me have a little bit of hope is this dotted line, the five year average. And we see that usually during this time, reefers do experience a drop in rates, but the $2.19 per mile on average is of course the lowest it has been in at least the last five years. So this is not good. But again, question of where you need to go if you have a reefer, and we're going to look at the same exact maps as for the dry van. So again, we are using these two, the rejection rate uh, and the volume map from Sonar to figure out which places are better for the reefer. Now again, the top five places where the volume is greatest for reefers on the general market or in the general market are Allentown, Pennsylvania, Lakeland, Florida, Joliet, Illinois, Atlanta, Georgia, and Fort Worth, Texas. This is where most of the loads come out of on the contract market. Now, in terms of rejections, rejections are highest in Seattle, Washington, 39.24%, Spokane, Washington, 24.36%, Memphis, Tennessee, 24.32%, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, 23.33% and Fargo, North Dakota, 18.33%. But again, we have to match up the volume and the rejection to figure out which market areas actually see more contract loads flow to the spot market. So for that, I took this data, I did volumes times rejection rates and the top five market areas, which have the most volume hitting the spot market are the green ones. We have the Ontario, California market, Spokane, Washington, Salt Lake City, Utah, Memphis, Tennessee right here, and also Twin Falls, Idaho is on fifth place. Anything that's red here has almost no rejections or no volume, so nothing is really hitting the spot market. Anything that is white or gray are places where there's not enough data, unfortunately. Finally, we have our flatbeds. So on the spot market, volumes also decreased, although they are above 2023 levels, but below the five year average. So yeah, volumes are continuing to decrease for flatbeds, which is a pity. Now, in terms of spot rates, those also decreased by a little bit to $2.48 per mile on average. Unfortunately, these rates are below 2023 levels as well as the five year average. So where do you need to go with a flatbed in order to grab relatively better opportunities? We don't have such fancy maps on sonar for flatbeds. So as a reminder, I make my own using truck stop data. So first we have the volume map on the spot market, the lighter an area, the less loads there are, the darker it is, the more loads there are. Weekly changes are that Montana, Kansas, Louisiana, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Kentucky saw a drop in flatbed volume. 
the only place that saw a significant increase was Minnesota. Now the question is now truck capacity. Where are all these flatbed trucks? Again, the lighter an area, the less trucks, the darker, the more trucks. What are the changes from last week? Well, there were increases in capacity in Oregon, Nevada, Wyoming, and New Mexico, but capacity did decrease in South Dakota, Arizona, Arkansas, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Georgia, and North Carolina. So now putting these two together to find out the load to truck ratios, where are there more loads than trucks? Where do flatbeds have negotiating power at this point? So I have some good news for you guys, not outstanding, just good news. And that's that the red area is actually getting a little bit smaller. Red means that there is less than one load per truck, which means over capacity. All these whitish areas are about one load per truck. Yellow is about two loads per truck. And these green areas are three loads or more per truck. So week over week, we actually saw that Nevada, Arizona, West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, got better. Whereas Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Vermont got worse. Just like last week, Oregon, Mississippi, and Alabama are still the areas that have over three loads per truck. The only problem with Oregon is that it's surrounded by dead markets, but Mississippi and Alabama are surrounded by better markets and pretty good markets where there are two loads per truck. Not as many deadheading trucks from the surrounding areas. So yeah, guys, that's what this week looks like in terms of the freight market. Now, at first, when I was writing up this video, I had a whole spiel I wanted to do at the end of the video, which I decided against, because you know what? At the end of the day, we are all aware of the fact that the market is bad. We are all struggling. I don't think there are many carriers or drivers or owner operators or dispatchers that are having a blast in the current market. So I decided this whole speech that I had about how bad everything is and how depressing it is, it was just not necessary. We are all on the same page. So instead, I'm going to do what I usually do, and that's find the good in a very bad situation. Capacity did decrease and continues to decrease. Volumes in the general freight market are up, and we can see that there are markets that are moving and grooving. Some of them are getting worse, some of them are getting better, but at least we are not standing in one place. Patience, persistence, and more patience. So basically what I'm saying is that there is really no way to control what is happening in the market. You cannot change the rates. You cannot change what's happening in the contract market, nor can you change the diesel prices, right? But what you can change is how you react to it. I'm choosing to react to this craziness with a smile on my face at this point, because I'm tired of being upset about something I cannot change. So yeah, just keep your head held high. Wishing you all a fantastic rest of your week and weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep learning. See you in the next video.